Now, the next rule is that if you have been asked to integrate a function which doesn't have any other function, for example, sin inverse x. In this case, where is the second function? I have only one function here. So, what do I do? In cases like this, what you will do is, I will take the constant x1 as my second function. Okay. So, I will write sin inverse x as sin inverse x into 1 dx. So, my answer will be sin inverse x integration of 1 dx minus differentiation of sin inverse x is root under 1 minus x square into integration of this first function which is x dx. Okay. So, here you will get as x sin inverse x and then you will get here you can write 1 minus x square as t. So, minus 2 x dx will be your dt. So, here you will get half dt divided by t to the power half. Okay. You need to integrate this. If you integrate this, what you will get is as you tell me what should be the answer. Okay. Simple. You need to follow the basic formula of integration. Half t half half this gets cancelled. So you my solution is x sin inverse x plus t to the power half. So here will be the same. Okay, so this is my solution. Now, let us take another problem um, pertaining to this second rule, integrate ln x dx. Again, in this case, what I will do is, I will take ln x as my first function and I will take 1 as my second function. So, if I integrate this, I will get sorry, minus of differentiation of ln x is 1 by x and integration of 1 is x dx. So, my answer is ln x minus x plus some constant c. Okay. Okay. Now, let us see what the third rule says. The third rule says that if you land up in a situation where both the functions u and v are directly integrable. That means you know what the integration of both the functions are. In that case, how do you select the first function and how do you select the second function? In that case, what you will do is, the first function is chosen in such a way that the derivative of the function then obtained is easily integrable. You know that this has this formula. Right Now, I have landed up in a situation where I know the integration of both u and v. So, in this case, the first function I will choose whose differentiation is easily integrable. Okay. For example, let us take x cos x dx. Here, The derivative of x is easily integrable, right? So, I will take that as my first function. So, if I integrate this, I will get sin x minus integration of cos x will give me sin x, integration of sin x will give me minus cos x. So, this is my solution. Now, instead of this, if I had taken cos x as my first function, I would have ended something like this cos x integration of x dx minus derivative of cos x is minus sin x dx. So, this is again a problem to solve this. Okay. Now, there is a rule of thumb which we follow 
if we have landed it landed in a problem where both u and v are directly integrable we follow the rule of thumb which is known as i late okay i stands for inverse trigonometric functions l stands for logarithmic functions a stands for algebraic functions t stands for trigonometric functions and e stands for exponential functions okay so whichever function like say let's say uv whichever function comes first like if you have an inverse function and an algorithm function so the inverse function will become my first function okay whichever function comes first in this priority that function becomes my first function so if u is exponential and v is algebraic which is my first function obviously v will be my first function okay similarly if you have let's say log and trigonometric i'll take log as my first function trigonometric as my second function if we have exponential and inverse inverse will be my first function exponential will be my second function that's exactly what we have done here when we are integrating x cos x dx okay now since trigonometry trigonometry comes second and algebraic is first so my x becomes the first function and cos x i had taken as my second function okay 